Hey everyone and welcome back. A tool which I've really underused are these slitting saws which I originally bought for the die filer project. It turns out the holes on this one aren't perfectly circular and the arbor which I made back for the project wasn't really well designed and this led to a lot of run out in that arbor. Seeing as I have to remake a whole lot of my tooling to fit the new Morse taper collet size that I'm using, I thought I'd take you through the process of making a brand new arbor. And hopefully in this one, there isn't too much run out. So let's get started. I'll be making the arbor from this cold drawn 1214 steel. It's sufficiently strong and the arbor doesn't require a really strong material and it machines up really nicely. With these arbors, there is no one true correct length. It really depends on the clearance that you need and for this general purpose one, it's going to be around about 50 millimeters long, though for what you need, it can really vary. I've gone ahead and chucked the stock in the fore jaw in the lathe. Initially, getting it concentric isn't a huge problem. Now from this one piece of stock, I'll be able to form the main body, plus the retaining cap. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and form the cap first. The first thing I'll form will be the extrusion that holds the slitting saw in place. Now I'll do the bulk of the stock removal using carbide, since I'm able to take greater cuts with carbide than I can take with high speed steel. According to the micrometer, I'm about 25 microns over the desired diameter. The carbide isn't sharp enough to take such a light cut, so I'll swap over to a really sharp piece of high speed steel that I've ground. And that's a really good fit on the slitting saw. I'll also use the sharp high speed steel to face the back edge and I'll remove the radius formed by the carbide insert. Next I'll take the shank down to 20mm in diameter so it fits really nicely in the collet. I tried taking it down with the high speed steel initially but it just wasn't handling it as well as the carbide did so I swapped back to the carbide. Now even though this DCMT insert gives me a really good surface finish, I think we can do a lot better. A while back I bought these circular inserts, and strictly speaking, these are made for face mills. But they should give us an excellent surface finish here on the lathe. Off camera I made a quick tool holder so I can use it in the lathe. Now the tool pressure is really high due to the large contact area, which is why I'm only using it to turn down the final millimetre, but looking at it, the surface finish is really good. And that fits really nicely into the collet. It's certainly not as good as a ground in surface, but it's a big improvement. Next, I want to part the cap from the main body. I'll start by parting it off in the lathe, and I'll finish it off by hand. I'll chuck the cap, and then I'll clean up the face. Now in hindsight, I probably should have used the independent forge or chuck to dial out the runout, but if it causes any issues, I can always remake this part. Now the cap is held on to the body using an M5 cap head screw. I'll use a drill to drill through the cap and then I'll use a boring bar to make a counter bore.
And that's the part done. Huh? To machine the other side of the arbor, I'll hold the part in the Morse taper collet in the lathe. Now one thing that I didn't account for is the fact that because the work is held further back, much closer to the headstock, the carriage handwheel was actually hitting the control box housing. So I ended up having to hold the tool holder at a 45 degree angle. The tool was cutting, but it wasn't breaking a chip all that nicely, and it wasn't leaving a great surface finish. However, this is not a big issue since this end will not be held in the collet. With the front faced, I now need to bore a hole that will accept the extrusion on the cap. I'll drill the first hole slightly deeper since I'll be tapping it M5. Now I want the hole size to match the cap exactly, so I'll take it to its final size using the boring bar. And that's a pretty good fit. The final thing that I need to do is tap the hole. And before I forget, I need to face the top end of the tool. And that's the tool assembled. I didn't get any footage of me assembling it, but the tool assembles by sandwiching the slitting saw between the cap and the main body. Running the tool for the first time, I can see that I have picked up some run out somewhere, though I'm not exactly sure where I picked it up. I'm sure it looks a lot worse on camera than it did in person, though this is an area that I'll have to work on in the future. With this slitting saw, the deepest cut I'll be able to take is about 15mm. The first test that I'll do will be in some aluminium. The last time that I did this, I got the best results doing one full depth of cut, rather than doing several shallow cuts. And that cut very nicely, and the surface finish on the cut part is very good. I'll do the next test in some cast iron, and I'll have to do two cuts. And that's also a very nice cut. Overall, I'm really happy with this tool. With this design, I'm getting much better results than I was getting with the old arbor, and it's a lot more compact. One thing I am planning to do in the future will be to swap out these small slitting saws for some much larger ones, so I can take much larger cuts. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something new. See you next time.